of is exam Islamic literature, of church traditions that have been passed on since the founding of the church, etc. They are all well-established human endeavors. Now you can examine those and accept them, or you can examine them and reject them, but they have to be examined. They are clear evidence outside of science. I mean, they're not tricks. Somebody is not tricking us but into believing well, in the supernatural. No, but they're, they're evidence that in these traditions people thought certain things, but that doesn't mean that what they thought was, was right. It's hardly evidence just that people for 2,000 years have thought something, is that it? That is correct. That is correct. But if I examine what they've thought over this long period of times, I find that I can, without divorcing my whole rational structure, I can accept that. I do not find that I, as a person and as a scientist, am sort of schizophrenic. That, that is, I'm being strict about my scientific methodology, but I'm sort of being, I'm being juvenile. I'm being non-rational. Uh, I'm being non-inquisitive when I accept scriptures and church tradition and all that comes with them. I think it's coherent. Yes. You mentioned both the Christian tradition and the Islamic tradition. These are not the same. Buddhist. No, uh, yes. So how do you decide which one? I mean, you're a Catholic priest. Um, why light upon that tradition rather than any of these other ancient traditions? It's because traditions? of my history. All of us have our personal history, which we struggle with. I mean, I grew up in a very Catholic family, okay? Um, does that mean that I've been duped? I grew up in a Catholic family. I went to Catholic schools. I questioned it, went through the traditional juvenile rejection of this, rejection of that. I grew up as an adult. I studied uh, science. And I found through the long, my own personal history, and I think this reflects many, many uh, believing scientists, through my own personal history, I found not only was there an inconsistency, but there was a coherence. But if you had been brought up in an Islamic country, you'd be, be a Muslim, therefore? Probably so. I mean, we're all, we are all um, subject to our personal histories. I, I can't well, deny Well, we clearly it. are, but doesn't that undermine your feeling that, of validity of the one you just happen to have been born into? No, because it's my, this is a faith statement now. It's my firm belief that God deals with each of us in his own way. So the, that, the Muslims' beliefs which contradict yours are equally valid in his personal history and therefore equally valid? That's a very valid. challenging question. I would say there are um, ingredients of God's speaking to the Muslim tradition, to the Buddhist tradition, to the Catholic tradition. They're elements of God's um, true revelation to these people in all of those traditions. Uh, each of us wants to make our own claims. I think it's always wrong for any of the traditions to claim that they have the absolute truth, that they are the ones that God really speaks to. I don't think, I think that's a caricature of what happens, but it has happened in history, of yeah. course. We have to face that. Um, why don't you accept those things which are universal, like the existence of God? Uh, what, why do you, in, in addition, accept those things which would be contradicted by these other traditions, like the, I don't know, whether the virgin birth or, or some, some part of the Catholic tradition which, which is particular to the Catholic tradition? Because be, besides, you know, believing in the existence of God, I firmly believe that God has spoken in a very special way, okay, through the Jewish tradition up until the birth of his own son. I firmly believe that Jesus Christ is true God and true man, sent to us by God to save us. That's all my religious tradition, and I find that that is not incoherent with my life in general, and certainly not incoherent with my scientific pursuits. No, not with that, but with, but with the possibility that you might have been brought up in a different tradition and would believe something that really did contradict it. Yes, okay, we're speaking now, if I could, uh, you know, sort of broaden the discussion, we're speaking about a very short period of human history, 
much less an extremely short period of cosmic history. Indeed, yes. <laughs> so if we're, we're living in a universe that's 14 billion years old, a human civilization, how, how far back will we date just the first human being? Uh, oh, uh, Some but, fraction well, of a million years? Yes, I mean, but that, that, you wouldn't want to call that civilization. No. Do it, and it, then, yes. you know, religious history, um, certainly Judaic Christian tradition from, I would say, roughly 2,000 years before Christ. Up in, These are very short periods of time. Who knows in the whole kind of more cosmic universal um, view of things that the religious traditions will not eventually unify. Well, maybe. Uh, this, the sort of paltriness of this human time scale compared to the time scale that you as a distinguished astronomer are used to dealing with and I as a biologist am used to, to dealing with, d doesn't that seem rather small? Don't, don't you feel there's a kind of grandeur about the universe which the re religious traditions you're talking about fail to do justice to? Richard, I would firmly agree with you that many times we do not appreciate the fact that our religious traditions are very small in time. I expect also in space, though I, you know, I'm not yes. going to speak as to whether yes. they're extraterrestrials. Let's leave that. But about. Certainly from, from all we know thus far, probably very limited in space. And we don't appreciate that enough. I must tell you that I often tell... Um, my um, fellow colleagues in the pursuit of our religious pilgrimage within Catholicism, in particular Christianity in more general, and the Judaic uh, Christian tradition more generally, often tell them, do you realize that I firmly believe that God spoke to us? So of course we are limited in space and time and religious tradition even more so. Um, I often have to remind religious believers, especially in my own religious tradition, that we believe that God through scripture is speaking to us, the inspiration of scripture. What that exactly means is far too difficult to, to get into. I mean, I have my own reason, but I do believe that God is speaking through us, to us through scripture and through the traditions of the church. But the point is God is speaking to us. So we have to interpret the authors of, the, of Scripture are human beings who lived in different cultures over a long period of time. For instance, the book of Genesis, rather clearly established now, is written by many authors over a long period of time. There are two creation stories that contrast, if you try to interpret them literally and scientifically, contrast with one another. Point is that um, all that we believe are human beliefs and we have to we have to accept that we have to accept the limitations of it we have to accept what i would call the fallibility of it it's not absolute you know final truth that we have and much less if we talk about extraterrestrials or so people yeah. say you know i say well, i don't know whether god spoke to them if they exist and if he did what he said all i know is what god said to us what do you say to uh, fellow Christians who take the book of Genesis literally and Adam and Eve and, and six days and things like that? Um, I say as little as I have to because I, I tend to get very upset by it. Any literalist, fundamentalist interpretation of scripture because it simply reveals, I hate to be this harsh with people who are real believers and, and very religious, but... Um, Sorry. It, it does, because it reveals a very fundamental ignorance of what Scripture is all about. and what. Let me put it this way. Scripture was written between, let's say, 5,000 years, at least the traditions back to the prophet Abraham, the patriarchs, until about 200 years after Christ, which is the Gospel of St. John. That's the span of the Judaic Christian Scriptures. Modern science came to be and roughly, you know, in the, the 17th century, with Galileo on through Leibniz and Newton, there is no science in Scripture that can't be because of that conflict of dates, but they had no scientific mentality. 